Ecologists usually think about ecology on one of three different levels. On one level, you might have a group of organisms of a particular species living at the same time in more or less the same place. It makes sense to think about this as a single group because these are the individuals that might be able to breed with one another, they might interact with one another, they might say compete with one another for food or territory and they might do things like, say, rely on the same food source. At this level, but ecologists are often interested in, for example, how the numbers of individuals change over time, or whether most of the individuals in the population are younger or older. At the next level up, ecologists look at all of the different species that might interact in a particular relatively limited area. So here, you're not just looking at the geese, which are found in a particular lake. You're looking at the organisms that they might eat as food. You're looking at maybe the predators lurking in these reeds back here that might try to eat geese. All of these different species that are interacting um, are subject to another sort of set of ecological questions. So for example, how do the geese affect the numbers of, say, small snails, if they're snail-eating geese? Um, or how do the geese on the uh, pond affect the number of, say, foxes or coyotes that might eat geese? Finally, when you add factors that are not living, what are called abiotic factors, uh, you start thinking about questions on a larger scale. At this level, over here, ecologists are often concerned with the flow of particular elements or nutrients, such as, say, carbon or nitrogen. These elements are often found in inorganic form. They're found in non-living form in the environment. So, for example, nitrogen gas makes up much of the atmosphere. Um, carbon can be found in, for example, calcium carbonate. That's limestone. However, these elements are also important components of living beings. Um, so, for example, an ecologist at this level might be interested in when we burn fossil fuels and add to the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, um, how much of that gets taken up by plants, and then how much of that increased plant productivity gets passed on to geese. Or it might be interested in uh, questions like if nitrogen gets added to this whole system, where does it end up? Does it increase the uh, nutrient availability for geese and therefore increase their population numbers? <clears throat> there are, of course, specialized names for these three different levels. A population is a group of interbreeding or at least interacting individuals of the same species. The community level is this middle one here. That's where you have interacting organisms from many different species. And this largest level picture over here is the ecosystem. That's where you're concerned about one or more communities plus the non-living components that are found around them. So go ahead and take the quiz on the levels of ecology and then come back to these videos.